uh, some good old sparkling water on a Thursday night, a last minute decision to record a podcast. We weren't going to do anything because there wasn't really much to react to new of the groups we still need to watch. And we don't have any design staffs lined up right now currently. Um, so we're like, let's we're talk here. about the season. Huh? Yeah. But we're here. Yeah, we're here. We haven't put much out there beyond what we've said within our reaction videos about our thoughts on um, like WGI Percussion 2024. And we've had all kinds of conversations like we do every year with each other, with other friends of ours in the activity and around the activity. And we were just like, let's just put our thoughts out there. Let's turn the turn the camera on and just start talking about the season, thoughts, all that stuff. So before we get into that, welcome everyone to the Asian Out Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Michael Fantini. And with me as always is... Evan Wall. And make sure you comment, like, subscribe on YouTube, share the video with anyone there if you think they would appreciate it. Uh, if you're on podcast services, obviously, head over there and do the same things if you would like to see our faces while we talk about all this. And uh, Facebook, Instagram, com or follow over there, uh, patreon.com, or hit the join button on YouTube if you want to support us financially. YouTube, the only option is just 99 cents a month. Just helps us with gas getting down the road and all that stuff. Nothing crazy. But we appreciate the viewership no matter what. So, WGI 2024 go uh yeah <laughs> so this is going to be a very stream of conscious episode yes. probably um we I don't have an outline note. i got a couple notes just that i've yeah. jotted down in a, a note on my phone over the course of the season things that i've noticed um one thing i've noticed with trends of shows which it, it makes a lot of sense a lot of them do feel like they start very similar in nature um, I'm sure a lot that has to do with just the communication and being able to maybe ease a judge into it. For example, a lot of the shows start kind of with like the synth or mm -hmm. some type of type of sample or patch, or they start with the front ensemble, but they maybe layer in. It's not the full front ensemble. I get that from a construction standpoint for a lot of reasons. Obviously, it, from a timing standpoint, it's it's easier mm -hmm. to just like integrate and build in. Um, and also not as abrasive to start right away with the full-on battery. Uh, one oh. show that does stand out is like AQ show. They just start off with like snare That's ram. almost exactly where I was going to go there because you're talking about, you know, they kind of ease you into it, dip your toe in the water with the show starting. But I think for yeah, that AQ's reason... Like snare solo, snare solo, announcement, yeah, snare exactly. solo. Exactly. Like, like um, for, for that reason, though, when groups don't do that now because that's become the norm, it's fresh. Starting yeah. off with like a snare feature in your face or like a full battery just attack is very fresh now because we've gotten so used to this subtle laid back kind of layering approach like you were talking about. And obviously you probably from an effect standpoint, I would guess you wouldn't want to just literally, well not literally, metaphorically punch the audience in the face. It can be a little abrasive, a little much. Um, but yeah, it really, it really is the norm. I mean, who are we talking to? Um earlier today actually texting about we're in the age of abstract now right right with show <laughs> yeah, designs in general very... like everything is so abstract like go back 10 years ago a lot more shows were a lot more straightforward um yeah it just it's it's been interesting to see the evolution and this year i really feel like it's very apparent but in uh, there's a few shows that don't like you know we talked about we did the monarch breakdown the first thing you hear is the flute um in the gmu show the first thing you hear is the saxophone um and i think those shows will, will kind of hopefully stand out i'm sure that's what the staffs and the design staffs are hoping for too it stands out a little bit just because it starts different um i feel like typically a lot of what you see from the battery is the first voice that you hear is the the tenors which makes a lot of sense constructurally it's a softer voice it's not abrasive it's in the mid voice um so Another thing that stands out to me this year is there's a lot of uh, wind instruments in general. Um, there are. There are quite uh, a few groups that have wind instruments this year. It's, it, I know they've been around for a while, but this year I feel like it's a, the mo most di highest number of different groups that have Yeah, it. there's a few groups using like the saxophone, um, Cap City, GMU, an oboe? Uh, Redline, Dark Skies using oboe, yeah. which is an interesting bold move is an interesting timbre for indoor drum line. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bold um, move. I hope for that performer's state sake, it's not too cold at finals. Yes. Uh, that would not be getting ideal. That, getting that intonation locked in. Um, I think broken cities using a viola or a violin. Um, GMU has the upright bass and the trombone player. Um, I feel like there's another one too. Or, or Monarch has the flute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's just a lot of textures being used, but it seems to be more and more prevalent as we as we go. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know how I feel about it honestly, but it, it hasn't it hasn't pushed me one way or the other. I think if it's done right, well, it yeah, totally okay, yeah. fits. It fits, but it, but if it's forced, it's like eh. When it's good, it's good. When it's not, it's not. I mean, I know that sounds like a very blanket, matter-of-fact, like, duh statement, but that really is the reality of it. So, I mean, beyond, beyond, like, trends in shows and everything, my brain, the first, once we brainchild, just childed earlier, just getting on and talking, I was like, all right, we don't want this to be a predictions podcast, because we'll do our actual predictions podcast episode, like, with the spreadsheet, like we always do, and then everybody can make fun of us or give us praise when we got it all right, which will not happen, but... Still need to um, track down some shows, to be honest. Yeah, there's a couple we haven't seen. However, there are certain elements within the rankings and placings and scorings that I want to talk about. I mean, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't address the elephant in the room, and that that's... Pulse is kind of dunking on everybody, and has since January. yeah. I mean, I was texting one person. <laughs> it's it's hard to, you know, I'm trying to rephrase this the right way. It's undeniably good. Yes. They're freaking like, it's, it's not even it's, really it's, close. It's even if you, whether you dislike or like their show design approach, it's just good. The it's playing it is so... I watched Saturday of the West Power Regional. This is March 28th, so the West and East Power Regionals were last weekend. And we watched GMU and um, United on the East Coast with a couple with, like, Dartmouth and stuff that were over there. On the West Coast, we caught – both of us watched between Saturday and Sunday pretty much all of Independent World. Mm-hmm. I didn't get a chance to see any of the high school groups on the West Coast. You watched Ayala and Chino Hills, I think? Uh, yeah, I watched a handful of them. Let me see. Do I have, I have notes to these somewhere? I actually uh, took some notes too. I can pull up now that I think about it. But while you're yeah. doing that, I watched I Hollow Chino Hills. I mean, there's a few shows out west that aren't done. Like, right. I all the shows not done. Broken, Broken City, City shows, shows not, not done. done, which is shocking. Um, well, that's kind of their, that's kind of their pace. They just, you know, I, it does surprise me that it's not done, but it's what they do. It, it, they usually finish out at SCPA championships. So, um, where I was going with bringing up the fact that we both watched it was kind of just to talk about how it played out and just discuss where things might stand sure. just short of like an actual prediction beyond, I mean, based on what you and I, you and I just said, people probably know that pulse is going to be at the top of our list already in terms of who's going to win the gold medal. But yeah, that I opened my secret. note file from the West regional, literally first line pulse played their nuts off. I think my we, first line is so much better. It's laughable. Yes, you texted that to me and Chris Gary, and actually we were talking to Dan and Travis about GMU United recap, well, not recaps on Saturday, while while Pulse was on the floor and I was watching on Saturday, and I texted to both of them mid conversation. I was like, I mean, guys, Pulse is just throwing down right now. Mm-hmm. Like it was doing knee slides across the floor, no hiccup in clarity and blend, jumping off stuff like just marching. So sp- it, it's just. And then you watch RCC and you watch uh, Broken City, and they're very good. Broken City's got a couple audio-related moments or musical moments in their show that are really cool. That make you almost do like a metaphorical double metaphorical double take when yeah. it happens. You're like, what what just happened? And then you process it and go, oh, that's unique. That's cool. But it's just the spread was like, what, two points between Pulse and second place? If you, yeah, before the penalty, it was like over two um, before Pulse and Broken or RCC, who was second. Um, let's back up. So you, you mentioned mm-hmm. I watched the, the New Jersey regional. First of all, I'll talk about this more later, and I don't want to spoil <laughs> it for people who haven't seen it, but the Dartmouth show. Oh, man. The Gallery X is so unhinged, and it is. We're not going to give away what the. Re- <laughs> there's, there's some kind of a reveal <laughs> midway through the show that is. It's awesome. great. It's fun. It's awesome. It's going to be they're so cool. Playing. And they're playing their ass off. It's going to be so yeah. cool in UD Arena to watch it happen live, and the crowd's going to be go nuts. It's 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 really really cool, and they're playing really really well on top of it. That's almost like a hot take. I think this, based on the show and the way they play, could be Dartmouth's year. They haven't won in a while. This they're going to be up there, man. They'll be um, they'll be in medal contention for sure. And then, like, I watched GMU and United, and I, I did feel on the stream, of course, this is a stream, and we're not there in person, but I did feel like the 
clarity of intent and the clarity overall from the GNU show for finals was a noticeable difference from United. Um, that could just be partially the stream, but also due to like United's book is pretty dense. It's it's it's, it's like an outdoor going on. book to me. Uh, Do they have that one shot where like check it, check it, check it, check it, check it? It reminds me of like Cadets uh -huh. 2013. It's, <laughs> just laying into those shots. It's like an East Coast uh, outdoor book at times, which love it or hate kinda, it. I mean, that's their thing. I mean, yeah, they're... they've. I've always respected about that drum line over the years that they hit the drum and they go yeah. after it and they're aggressive and they're unapologetic about it. And that is what it is. Love it or hate it. They do it and they do it pretty, pretty well pr almost every year. Like yeah. they're in the top 10 every year, deservedly. So um, I don't know where I haven't thought hard enough about where they'll finish. I will say their shows, not my like most cup of tea. There's some really cool moments that you can tell are designed for effect and like to get the crowd involved in terms of the way they set up certain subsection features and things mm -hmm. like that. But now I'm a little biased because we've talked to the GMU designers and I know a lot of the details of what their show's about now. I don't know anything about United show. So right. I'm a little biased evaluating the two next to each other because I don't have the insight into the nuances of United show like I do GMU show at this point. So I'm going to inherently appreciate GMU show more as of now. But playing-wise, I, I would agree with you. I thought GMU's battery, at least, play. I don't know enough about the fronts to be able to differentiate the two. But in terms of drumline land, I would say I felt like GMU's drumline played a little better than United's on Saturday. Not well, a lot, I felt like that but a little ensemble. bit. And then, of course, you know, I did feel validated in that opinion when I saw the recap and both yeah. Tom Rarick and Brian Mason – who were judging the music captions that that day mm -hmm. on Sunday had GMU in first in the performance box. So I was like, okay, that makes sense yeah. to me. Yep. Um, I think United did beat GMU in performance the day before. I think they were ahead of them on Saturday. But like I said, it was close to me. I thought GMU played a little better, but it wasn't like a, a canyon sized gap between the two. Right. Um, so then I, then I bounced over on Sunday to that to that Cali regional where I was able to catch like the last four high schools uh, that were going on in PSW. Um, I, all I put down for Chino Hills was great. They're great. It, it's solid um, every year. I, I will but, say I mentioned Dartmouth. I think it could be their year. Part of that equation is when I w I've watched a couple lot videos of Chino Hills over the past week or so since it's come out since the regional. Excuse me. And. Um, I feel like I wasn't as impressed with them. I was still impressed. They're still one of the best high schools every single year, without a doubt. But I feel like I wasn't as impressed as I usually am. And it could just be because I've come to expect it from them. So when it's not like pulse level of clarity, I'm like, oh, yeah. it's not really that impressive anymore. But then I have to back up and remind myself. You get numb to it. They're 15-year-olds. And <laughs> you can't just expect them to be nails every single year. But right. Yeah. I think uh, I think the top of independent scholastic world could be interesting. Is the moral? Of yeah, the story. I haven't seen Avon since real, real early. Um, they'll be good. That Ayala show is hella fun. I don't know. I it's need just, to find it. On it's YouTube. just a vibe, man. Like, and the demand is there. I think they'll their score will their gap between them and Chino will decrease, or you know, could potentially jump when they finish their show out. Yeah. And when they do get a little bit cleaner, because they weren't quite as consistent at that Cali Regional, uh, but they still got like a month here. So I, I look forward to seeing Ayala in person. That that show that show was killer. Well, now, I, like I said, I haven't seen it yet. I didn't get to catch them on Saturday. I need to go to YouTube when we're done recording and take eight minutes and watch it real quick. But uh, you texted me about it right when it happened live on Sunday. You were like, this Ayala show is sick. Yeah. So uh, let's see. <laughs> Red Wave. Uh, dude, that was funny. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, I was texting my friend Joe, who's uh, he used to be the director there, uh, Joseph Avery. I was like, man, this ensemble likes purple. Of course, it made sense. You know, last year they did uh, the Alzheimer show, which the purple ribbon is right, uh, right, Alzheimer awareness, um, and that was a cool show. <laughs> but they had like purple tarp again this year. I was like, they like purple. Um, <laughs> so was, I thought but... they were not as good as they were last year. At this point. I think maybe they are going through a little bit of changeover. Like I said, he's not there anymore. I don't know who's writing or who's like directing or so I don't know what that setup is. So it could be a little bit of a growing pain with just the changeover um, in staff. 
that reminds me too, talking about Red Wave, because they were the first group of multiple that have this. And I feel like it's a little more concentrated on the West Coast than it is in the East Coast or Midwest groups, but it still exists on our side of the country. But can we, and you and I have gone on a tirade about this before, and Red Wave has like a 40 second one or 30 second one. It's a, it's a front it's ensemble a moment. Yeah. And they're just like on the floor, just doing oh, a dance man. block. And it's like, we're not trained dancers, guys. It looks rough. It just well, looks not that clean as it would if you were trained dancers. And I'm not picking on Red Wave. I'm saying I saw this from multiple groups. And I'm like, it's just, it, it comes off as forced and half-assed, for lack of a better yeah. way to put it. I would suck at it. So I would be terrible at it. Like, but you watch certain groups, refu- certain groups don't do it. Um, some groups really do it a lot. And it, it stood out the most in Red Wave show just because their floor is very bare. There's like no no props. It's just the drum line out there. I'm not even sure they have a visual ensemble that I remember. I don't think so, no. So it's very, very exposed and bare. So when it's just, that's all there is to look at, you're going to notice every inconsistency in body lines. Every it's, it's just It just stood out. And then I watched a few other groups have the same kind of thing. Uh, throughout their show i mean shane said it when he was on here it makes like, transitioning to drum off to drum on is just really awkward from a pacing standpoint so they try to avoid it whenever they can and it's like it creates forced transitions because i mean you got to get them off you got to get them on you got to move them out of the way you gotta i don't know but it just doesn't I, seem like the juice is worth the squeeze yeah i don't really want to i guess talk about all these shows but i will say for me probably it, and you agreed the surprises of the weekend for me at that California regional yep. were Flux and Pow. Mm-hmm. Um, when Flux came on, I was like, oh, this is yes. like, I would say, a pretty noticeable jump in clarity. It um, was. Over Dark were Sky and Thesis. Yeah. Yes. And uh, Gold, too. Yeah. Um, it was just a, it was a noticeable jump in clarity at that point in the show and that run for those groups. Um, well, yeah, the was show it- was clever. The way they changed the tarp colors. I was like, oh. That's that's cool. So well, these surprises you allude to, we'll, we'll get to Pow here in a minute because they deserve a conversation all, all on their own. But I I was reminded of not falling into the trap of biases about groups from past seasons on how right. what level they achieved. Because I caught myself because as I'm as I'm watching prelims, I'm taking notes, making little bullet points in my phone, kind of doing a quasi how I would uh, rank them. And, you know, Dark Sky and Thesis had pretty solid seasons last year. Like, mm-hmm. Dark Sky made semis. Thesis would have made semis without the penalty. We were pretty impressed Did with what they were. Did they finals last year? Did, uh, they might have. I'm pretty sure. I think they were fifth. Didn't they sweep in? Let's find out. Yeah, the Google's an amazing thing. While you're doing that, either way, they had good seasons. Um, and were kind of standouts to us. So I had that bias in my brain of assuming they were going to be better than Flux. Because I wasn't impressed with flux last year really at all i don't think i don't think they made semis last year um correct me if i'm wrong they might have apologies if they did dark sky did not make finals okay so either way i had the bias and then flux comes on and i was like flux can't be i was like wait a minute it was good i know on the surface i wasn't impressed with what thesis and dark sky did but i was like flux better but i was using a group's past to influence my decision making instead of just looking at the show right in front of me that year. So as a PSA, public service announcement to anybody else, uh, don't let your past influences or opinions on groups influence what you might think of them this current season. Because Fl- Flux stood out big time. Big clarity jump over Dark Sky and Thesis. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, <laughs> I was watching Pal, um, and I was like, damn. They're good. <laughs> I was like, this is great. They're um, good. And then, honestly, RCC went on and... <laughs> I think, you know, I did text this to people. I was like, maybe this part of this is just the stream. Maybe it's just the way the tuning, maybe like it's the way it's presented. But I was like, Pal's battery sounds cleaner than RCC right now to me. Like uh, just watching this stream. I would imagine uh, there's a difference in difficulty of content between the two groups. But probably like um, we say on here all the time, clean is clean. Clean is clean. A clean um, triplet roll is a clean triplet roll at the end of the day. And, you know, we're watching through the stream, so, like, tuning schemes come into exactly. I mean, it can whatever. all affect it. Um, but just, like, I, that's just what I texted. I was like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Pow sounds great, so. I thought Pow's drums sounded, the snare drum tuning specifically, or really the whole battery tuning scheme mm-hmm. came across really, really well and balanced. And 
The show's cool. The show's engaging. I don't know what it's about. I don't remember. I might have uh, known at the moment. The show but... title was Drawn to the Flame. Um, uh, but I don't oh, remember. I think there were, like, pictures of, like, bugs drawn to flames, like, on the floor, if I remember. Could be wrong. Could be remembering oh, something Barry, else. don't look at the light. Yeah. <laughs> bugs but, yeah, I, I thought Pal was really good. They're better than last year, for sure. Um, the top three, I mean, we kind of already talked about that, so I won't beat a dead horse. Uh, well, what I will Broken go... City... Go Broken ahead. City no, obviously finish. still has stuff to do. Yeah. Um, Show to learn, design. But I will say the thing about Broken City to me is like when you watch it, you're like, man, they're just really good at like crafting mm -hmm. a feeling. Yes. Or like a vibe. And our friend Dean Hickman's alluded to this too. You just are kind of on the edge of your seat because you don't know what musical effect is going to happen next. You don't know like, is this moment going to hit? Like, are they going to hit this attack cold or whatever? Like, it just makes you feel something the whole time, even if it's tension, which could be intentional with the design process. Um, so that's the skill they're they're, they're great at. Um, I think uh, I'll go from here. I'll use this as a leapfrog, a stepping stone to this idea. Um, I think, obviously, we've said it. Pulse is, I think, the best group. I think Pulse is phenomenally good. The show works whether you like it or don't like it. But I will say... I think two through four is going to be a dogfight. And the reason I say that, and I'll even include Infinity in that conversation, because I think their show is really strong this year. I don't know where the hell two through six are going to fall. I I'm don't think, so, so I don't think Infinity is going to meddle. Could be wrong. And I only say that because I don't think they're going to get cleaned enough. They might have a show that's worthy of meddling, potentially. Challenge, ex challenge extended. Yes, take that infinity, as a challenge, right? Infinity. For any of you listening, your staff, um, your designers, take that as a challenge. I will say, the more recent videos I've seen of Infinity have been a lot cleaner than the first stuff that came out a month ago, or two months ago, whenever it was. Which, again, duh, you get cleaner as the season goes on. But I was it raised my eyebrows. I was watching it, I was like, okay, let's see where they can get it. This is a lot better. So kudos to them for the hard work so far. But... I don't know where the hell. I will say Rhythm X. I will say this here. Um, I, one of the, the quad techs, the quad tech at Rhythm X lives in Louisville, and I talk to him and hang out with him, Adam Norris. We also marched with him. Um, he showed me a lot video from their show the weekend before last that their, their media team took. And they've actually released a couple little Instagram clips so far, I think. Um, so we yeah, finally... up until now, though, there are a lot. I mean, they had one early on that was mm -hmm. like, Drumline it was AB inside on a theater. It was inside. It was a bad angle. But other than that, it's been like an enigma. We've watched them on the floor at a regional once, and I was like, "It's." Kind of... We've talked about how it can be awkward to do streams. I will say from this lot video, they used good audio equipment, good video equipment. I think X is towards the top of the conversation in terms of clarity. I think their front ensemble is the real deal this year. I've had others tell me they agree that know a lot more about front ensemble than I do. Um, they play some very impressive stuff. Um, the the snare line is basically the Cavalier snare line plus a blue coat and uh, like a two or three year vet. So the, you know they're going to be good with the same tech staff that was in front of them all summer. Um, the quad line solid. The bass line solid. I would I would probably hang my hat on if X doesn't meddle, it's not because of the playing. I'll make that statement. Yeah, yeah. Based they... on where things stand right now. I don't know what I'm going to do with these predictions. It's Dude, it's... I mean, uh, I think X has scored around a 92-something. Broken City, RCC, we're all in the I 92s. I think right now, in my gut, it feels like a Cali 1-2-3. I have made that statement, too. Early in, um, earlier in the season, before we got a better look at Mystique and X, I was like, this could be a California 1-2-3 this year. But also, Very easily. like, you know, X, MCM, and Infinity, and even I would, like, lump Monarch in there, like... They're gonna, I mean, they're all going to make a push. So. It's going to be what well, you and I were just talking about. We were talking to Ben Piles recently. Monarch sounds like they're playing in the video on the crappy phone in yeah. uh, a boomy gym great. in Texas. There were some moments I was like, that just popped. Like That was really good. So I, it's going to be a dogfight. I think Pulse is solidly in the driver's seat, but the rest of it, I'm just going to throw darts at a dartboard, and we'll, we'll see. But this leads me to my next question for you. And I don't know if we've talked about this, just you and I offline before. 
Infinity beat Mystique last year, right? Yep. If they beat, uh, if if for a second year in a row they beat another annual top five group and get fifth place, fourth, maybe who knows? At what point do we start considering it a top six? Are they if they do it again for a second year? Do we then consider like I mean, guys, they're one of the big dogs now, like they're in that they're in that category. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to. I, I do think that there is a lot more, you know, last year, just even in finals groups that made it, there were uh, there were a couple groups that had never made it before, I think, right? Or no, maybe that was two uh, years ago, with, like Rhythmic Force and Vigilante. Yeah, I think that was two, two years, years ago. ago. Uh, but there is more parity in the activity. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that talented kids are staying local more yes. often now instead of, like, moving to, like, bigger groups. <laughs> Very much so. Oh, instead of like traveling to go March X or Pulse or Mystique or whatever, I think groups are staying home a little bit more Mm -hmm. um, just from an economic standpoint too. So, I mean, yeah, I think if you're two years in a row beating what we would consider the top five, like one of them, whether it's Mystique or X or whoever, Mm -hmm. um, then yeah, you're like, all right, well, we kind of have like, we're getting closer to like a a top half, bottom half, because you're talking top 15 groups. We've expanded the college football playoff, folks, is what we're saying. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Uh, Let's see here. I mean, you have to. I mean, historical scores. What was 2022? uh, Let's see here. PIW 2022. Infinity was seventh. United was sixth. And then United was seventh last year. So, like, you're not kind of held the seven spot down though or six seven but yeah you know it, it'll be i think it, it'll start to become more of blurred lines yes than, like you're gonna have more groups off. that that you're uh, gonna you're gonna have more groups you're you're already starting to see more movement in that six through 11 six through 10 like i know united's been seventh eighth seventh the last three years they're solidly have have cemented themselves as like a top eight kind of group. But at that point, I, in my brain, I, the groups, I, I consider everything under the top five, typically all in their own, ca- the same category. And any of those groups in there on a given year could beat each other. That's really like, you're looking at GMU, you're looking at United, Monarch, Matrix, um, Infinity, uh, who else? POW, honestly, I would say this year. I mean, it's yeah. that next – at any given year, depending on show design, depending on clarity achieved, they could beat each other. Anyone could get seventh. The next year, they could get 11th, 10th. It's just – there's always been that solid divide between fifth to sixth. And, you know, Infinity broke the trend last year. Matrix has done it once. They beat Rhythm X like six, seven or eight years ago or something and got fifth. It doesn't seven – and then, like, it, it, in the year that behind the velvet rope year or something like that. You have outliers, but I think, as you said, it's a big it's a big deal to talk about the fact that kids, regional kids, are staying home more often. Whereas in the past, the trend was, oh, I'm now good enough to march Mystique, Rhythm X, Pulse, whatever. I'm gonna move for six March-ish, months yeah. and go there and do that group. Instead, now they have options that are close to competitive on that level. In Infinity, in Florida, in Monarch, in Texas, in GMU and United on the East Coast, like they can like stick a well PIW groups in California or ten or something. Yeah, tons of them. <laughs> so, I think that has helped a lot. The fact that the design teams have all caught up, they're now des- designing on a level closer to those the top echelon of the activity, which I think is great for competition and just, I mean, competition breeds innovation. So, yep, you're just going to see uh, people do cool stuff. I, I guess to to transfer ideas, one thing that does grind my gears. About, Here we go. Let me hear I'm it. I'm going to put on like the old man on the front porch, <laughs> get off my lawn. Um, <clears throat> it's not cool if it's not clean. That uh, is, you know, a tale as old like, as time right there. Dude, like the, the, the winter season is so finite with time, with how much time you actually spend together. Yep. And how and how much you have to just like you revert and you regress throughout the week before you can reclaim your time on mm-hmm. the weekend. We're talking about like independent groups. Yep. So, you know, I just if it's good, great. It's cool. But like if it's not clean, I just don't care. It's just not as impressive. That 
Um, is the reality. And you, you see drum corps get the fire hose out towards the end of the season. Like, hey, this ain't working. Let's just make it easier. All right. I, I think indoor um, groups should be more open to that. I think it goes, too, from a lot of standpoints. It's the book. It's the warm-up packet. It's like, it's, well, I mean, I that's a whole discussion. That's a whole but, discussion in and of itself. Um, But also, too, like the thing that I'll rant about that grinds my gears a little bit is like some of the visual ensembles, like, you know, kudos like cheers to freaking broken city who mm -hmm. just like refused to like They'd never play done the it. visual ensemble game like great and Love mystique it. had never done it till this year yeah he like what shane said he's like we didn't think we could do it well so we weren't going to do it yep um you know it's it's i don't know it's chaotic at times so yeah I, i'm ready for that trend to kind of revert and recurve a little bit we'll see but uh we'll see if it for happens one reason is this the reason I think is this, I think it's challenging to write choreography for it at mm -hmm. the BPMs and the tempos that this activity requires. You know, when I think about like beautiful dancing or like ballet or theater or musicals or anything like that, a lot of times like the tempo is slower and sometimes mm -hmm. ballet, it's crazy slow. Yeah. Um, but in this indoor medium, in this idiom that we have, like we're talking like 180, 160, 200, like yeah. minimum. It's it's going to make it come off rushed. And actually, this reminds me, uh, my girlfriend did competitive gymnastics for a long time. And she had never seen indoor till she met me, had never seen any of the stuff, had no clue what it was. But she's trained in body movement and dance and all that stuff from all the gymnastics stuff she did. And like one of the first things she said was, it looks rushed. All the visual... All, all the people not wearing drums when they're doing all this body and things and dance, she's like, it looks like they don't have time to finish a movement before they already have to move in and, and roll it into the next one. It just feels cluttered and rushed. So if somebody that has no knowledge of our activity outside of be knowing what good like dance movement looks like notices it, what are we doing? Like, is it is the juice worth the squeeze? Yeah, like it's it's got to be. Again, I know we just said that we kind of went full circle. Like, yeah, well, it's whatever. done well. It's done well. You know, Pulse in like John Mapes' wife's John Mapes' wife. I think her name's Rochelle. Like, I know she's a trained dance. Like, I think that's what she does for her job. Like, she teaches dance or like choreography or, or trains. It's like right. okay, it makes sense. These kids and these members are really <laughs> well trained and real prepared. So like great um but if you can't do it well like is it worth it don't do it is um, it worth it so that's kind of one of my my rants for the day uh, another rant to Go. whoever changed the scores page on the wgi <laughs> website can we freaking change it back um <laughs> dude, that's like a huge first world problem but i like, knew you were gonna go there but it's i mean i i don't want to click on the scores and see the winds and the guard and the percussion all on one page, like separate, like, and, and they're not even in like chronological order. I don't know what's going on. It's yeah. Uh, yeah. If we can change that back, let's do that. So I don't, I don't know how we get that done. I need to go to the PAB and like, is there somewhere to submit a form? Yeah. Is there a, is there <laughs> a, call the WGI office to complain. Um, is there but, an Adobe PDF I can fill out? You know, the season, the season in the totality or on the aggregate is, you know, freaking killer. It's going to be crazy. A lot of good whoever, groups this year. A lot of good groups. Whoever finishes and whoever makes it into semis and then whoever makes it. It's crazy, too, that they go from, like, 20 where they cut down, like, 11 groups, 10, 11 groups, and then from semis to finals. It's only five. Cut off five. But, you know, I mean, I guess it does help the judges get it a little bit more in order. Like, hey, we, we got to get the top 15 right. So... Yep, for sure. Although, man, looking through the schedule. Yeah, let's go. Let's, Al, let's talk sorry. about the prelims lineup. Sorry, we got this. Pal. We got the schedule for prelims, so let's jump into that really quick. Um, yeah, jumping off the gun. Who's Al, first? Going on first. That's right, pal. Unfortunately for them, nobody ever wants that spot. It it sucks that we have this discussion every year. It doesn't like. You're just, just they can't give you a super mm -hmm. high number. I can't remember too. Like, I mean, I know the judges do get to hold their numbers. I don't know for how long. Maybe it's the right. whole. Maybe it's up until the break. 
um, like the first break. And what I mean by hold numbers is like you don't have to submit them. Um, you can go back and change them, which is how it should be. I mean, let's just be honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, by the time you've seen four or five groups, you kind of get your feet underneath you. Uh, so the first, let's say, the first five, you got PAL, Audio Theater, RCC, Flux, United. So once you get through United, like, historically, you've got one, two, three finalists in there. You're going to kind of get a little bit of a sense of, like, all right, where are we? Where do mm -hmm. my spreads need to be? Yep. Um, do I need to rechange things and re reorder things? Because, I mean, the ultimate goal is to get it right. If you're sitting there telling a judge, like, after the first group goes on, you have to lock in your score and you can never change it. Like that's just not right. Yep. So yep. Agree. I, I don't know if Full they agree. get the for the whole round because there's two rounds or if it's just like you can hold until the break or hold for the first six groups. And then we need to kind of like start getting set in. Um, I think that AQ has a good spot. You know, they kind of go on middle of the pack in that first round or in the middle of the back half mm -hmm. of that first round. Um, Although the rounds don't really matter anymore. Yeah, um, you and TJ were talking about. I wasn't. I was working earlier, and I wasn't following your all's conversation closely. Uh, like, what were you all talking about how it works? Well, I think it used to be that they would take the first five scores from each round. So the top five scores from round one, top five scores from round two, and then the next ten highest scores overall, no matter what round. Mm -hmm. Um. Now I just think they do it like it's just the top 20 scores. It doesn't matter if you're in round one, if you're in round two, top 20, you're in. Hmm. Um, I think the only factor that the rounds have is when it comes to the order for the semifinal schedule. Um, and that is only for like the top six groups. So the rounds I don't think are – and even in the past, the rounds were never like – it wasn't that big a deal because they never put like RCC, Pulse – Broken City, Rhythm X, and MCM in, like, the same round. Like, they try mm -hmm. to, like, sp spread them out. Spread them out, for sure. So, it was never, like, that perennial, you know, top five. It was never, like, mm -hmm. oh, you're all in the same round. No. Yep. Um, and it's all the same panel, so it doesn't matter. Right, right. Makes sense. But, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> pal, come out and throw down. Just Yeah, it's, all, it's yeah. all you can do in that spot. And I think they will. I, they'll make semis for sure. Here's another spoiler for my predictions. Pal's going to make semifinals, everybody. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I do not think this will keep them out of semifinals. They're, like we said, I think they're having maybe the best year they've ever had from a playing standpoint. Could be a bold think, statement, but I do think that the uh, the back end of round two kind of stinks for a couple of those groups. You got the last three finishing up the day: Matrix, Resistance, who's a new group to PIW and Redline. Um, that's at the end of a long day. I'll, you're going to have to like be really great to beat out some groups as far as those last two to make it in the semifinals talking about resistance and red line. Um, yep. So like, yeah, that's, a, that's kind of a tough spot, but uh, not yeah, ideal. You got to play well. I mean, that's really the name of the game for anybody. You, if you got to play well, if you play well and you're undeniable, you'll be rewarded right nine times out of 10. So um, yeah, it's, it's going to be, I'm freaking excited. Honestly, I, I was thinking earlier today or yesterday, whenever, just when, are we going Thursday or Friday? Just Friday, uh, right? Yeah, Friday morning. We'll That's what Friday. I thought. That's what we did last year too, wasn't it? We yeah. weren't there for prelims day. Yeah. So yeah, we're going up Friday morning. Um, there's still time. There's some more groups we want to react to still. Uh, we we got to watch X still, obviously. We'll do GMU. We'll do United. We'll do, we're going to do POW. We know we're going to get a good POW video the weekend after this one. So SCPA we plan on prelims. Uh, yeah, I, I think, think so. What it is. Whatever Robert told us whenever the weekend after this one. I think, yeah, the coffee shop going to hook up. Yeah. Up. So looking forward to that. Um, getting a closer look there. What's going on. We want to react to flux this year. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully a good video of flux comes out. Cause we were very, very pleasantly surprised uh, with that group when we saw him. So yeah, We'll do we'll do some of the open class top of the open class activity like we always do every year. We'll do some high school sampling of the upper part of Scholastic World, or if there's another random group that like catches our eye or ear, and we'll we'll highlight them and stuff. But you yeah, two so, and May Rocky going down right now. They're and both good. PIO scene. Freedom's been solid the last few years in open. Um, 
Open's gotten a lot better, but that's a whole discussion yeah. in and of itself too. So yeah, a lot of groups to react to. We'll do our predictions podcast. If we, if we can get any other designers on here, we will before finals. We have what? Let me look at my calendar. I think it's three weeks. Three weeks, One, baby. Two. Oh, come on, calendar. There we go. One. Two, yeah. Three. After this three, weekend. Yep. Three weeks. So hopefully we'll be able to fit as much of that in as we can before. And we will. Aiden is coming, and I'm so excited for some Thai nine. <laughs> Dude, that place oh. is so good. It's so good. Oh. But uh, highly recommend eating at Thai nine if you're in <laughs> Dayton for any reason, honestly, not even just indoor band. But yeah, a lot of reactions coming. Hopefully, some more designer sit downs. We'll do our predictions podcast. We'll do our post finals podcast. If you've been around, you know the drill. Otherwise, um, Evan, anything else? We kind of just went all over the place, and I love it. So yeah, it's good. Always good a, a good rant here and there is all of, never a bad thing. Um, almost never a bad thing, I'll say. So, But again, share this with anybody. Comment, like, subscribe. It all helps us algorithmically. Uh, you all are a great audience, great listeners. It's awesome to interact with you all at shows, on YouTube, whenever. Um, Instagram, Facebook, follow us there. Patreon.com slash podcast or the join button here on YouTube to support us financially. And we'll see everybody next time, whether it's a reaction video, podcast, whatever. Peace.